Captain James Hawthorne stood atop the command deck of the HSS Thunderbolt, his steely gaze fixed on the shimmering energy barrier that enveloped the alien capital of Tsar Kesh. For centuries, the galactic hegemony had deemed this world unconquerable, its defenses impenetrable. But today, that was about to change. Status report. Lieutenant Chen Hawthorne barked, his voice carrying the weight of humanity's hopes. LT. Chen's fingers danced across the holographic display. All systems nominal, sir. The siege breaker is primed and ready. A ghost of a smile played across Hawthorne's weathered features. The siege breaker humanity's latest marvel of engineering. A weapon that could shatter any shield, penetrate any defense. It was the culmination of decades of research, the product of humanity's greatest minds. Very well, Hawthorne nodded. Commence the operation. As the words left his lips, a low hum reverberated through the ship. On the planet's surface, the alien defenders scrambled to reinforce their positions, unaware of the revolution in warfare about to unfold. Doctor. Ethan Reeves, the brilliant mind behind the siege breaker, stood beside Hawthorne, his eyes gleaming with a mixture of pride and apprehension. Captain, he began, his voice barely above a whisper, what we're about to witness. It will change everything. Hawthorne placed a reassuring hand on the scientist's shoulder. That's exactly what we're counting on, Doctor. The hum grew to a crescendo, and suddenly a beam of pure, coruscating energy lanced out from the thunderbolt. It struck the planetary shield, and for a moment, nothing seemed to happen. Then, like a soap bubble touched by a needle, the shield began to waver. Incredible breathed Major Derek Stanton, the grizzled veteran in charge of ground operations. I've never seen anything like it. The shield's collapse was both gradual and sudden. It flickered, pulsed, and then, with a silent explosion of light, vanished entirely. For the first time in millennia, the surface of Tsar Kesh lay exposed. Hawthorne's voice cut through the stunned silence on the bridge. Major Stanton, you have a green light. Take your men planetside and secure that capital. As Stanton saluted and rushed off to marshal his troops, Hawthorne turned to Doctor. Reeves, you've done it, Doctor. You've given humanity the key to the galaxy. Reeves nodded solemnly. Let's hope we use it wisely. The dropship screamed through Tsar Kesh's atmosphere, carrying the first wave of human soldiers to set foot on this alien world. Major Stanton, strapped into the lead ship, felt the familiar rush of adrenaline course through his veins. Remember, men he addressed his troops through the comm were making history today. The eyes of Earth are upon us. As the dropships touched down in the outskirts of the alien capital, Stanton was the first to emerge, his pulse rifle at the ready. The city before them was a marvel of alien architecture towering spires of crystal and metal that seemed to defy gravity itself. But there was no time for sightseeing. The Zarkeshi defenders, though caught off guard, were rallying quickly. Energy bolts sizzled through the air as the aliens attempted to repel the human invaders. Stanton's voice boomed over the cacophony of battle. Push forward. We need to secure the central citadel. The human forces advanced methodically, their superior tactics and technology evident in every engagement. The Tsar Keshi, for all their vaunted defenses, had grown complacent over the centuries. They had never expected to face a foe on their home soil. As the battle raged, Doctor, Reeves monitored the situation from aboard the Thunderbolt. Captain, he said, turning to Hawthorne, I'm detecting unusual energy readings from the center of the city. It could be their seat of power, or something far more dangerous. Hawthorne's brow furrowed. Can you get a more precise reading? Reeves shook his head. Not from orbit. We'd need someone on the ground, closer to the source. Without hesitation, Hawthorne opened a channel to Major Stanton. Derek, we need eyes on the central citadel. There's something there that could turn the tide of this battle. Stanton's voice came back, punctuated by the sound of weapons fire. Understood, Captain. We're pushing towards the city center now. I'll lead a team myself. As Stanton and his elite squad fought their way through the alien streets, the true nature of Zarkesh revealed itself. The city was more than just a capital, it was a vast, interconnected machine. Every building, every street, pulsed with an otherworldly energy. My God, Stanton whispered, as they approached the central citadel. It's like the whole planet is alive. The citadel itself was a colossal structure that seemed to pierce the very sky. As Stanton's team neared its base, they encountered fiercer resistance. 
the Tsar Keshi were throwing everything they had at the humans, desperate to protect their most sacred site. Captain Stanton's voice crackled over the comm, we're at the Citadel, but we can't get inside. The defenses are like nothing we've ever seen. Aboard the Thunderbolt, Hawthorne turned to Dr. Reeves. Can the siege breaker target a structure that precisely? Reeves hesitated. It's never been tested at that scale, but... Theoretically, yes. However, the energy backlash could be catastrophic. We don't know what kind of chain reaction it might set off in a system as integrated as this. Hawthorne's jaw clenched. This was the moment that would define not just the battle, but perhaps the future of human expansion in the galaxy. We've come too far to turn back now, he said finally. Doctor, prepare the siege breaker for a precision strike. As the Thunderbolt maneuvered into position, the battle on the ground reached a fever pitch. Stanton and his men were surrounded, fighting with desperate valor against an endless tide of Zarkeshi defenders. Whatever you're going to do, Captain Stanton's voice came through, strained and weary, do it fast. We can't hold out much longer. Hawthorne took a deep breath. Fire the siege breaker. Once again, the ship hummed with power. But this time, instead of a wide dispersal beam, a concentrated lance of energy shot forth, precise as a surgeon's scalpel. It struck the citadel's peak, and for a moment the entire structure seemed to glow from within. Then, with a sound that seemed to shake the very foundations of reality, the citadel's defenses crumbled. The energy that had powered Tsar Kesh for millennia surged outward in a great, pulsing wave. On the ground, Stanton and his men watched in awe as the wave passed through them, leaving them unharmed. The Tsar Keshi, however, collapsed where they stood as if puppets whose strings had been cut. Captain Stanton reported, his voice filled with wonder, the city. It's powering down. The Tsar Keshi, there. They're not moving. Aboard the Thunderbolt, Doctor. Reeves stared at his readings in disbelief. It's as if they were directly connected to the city's power grid. When we disrupted it. We disrupted them, Hawthorne finished grimly. As the dust settled, the full extent of humanity's victory became clear. The unconquerable capital of Tsar Kesh had fallen, and with it, the myth of alien superiority that had held humanity in check for so long. Stanton and his men secured the citadel with little resistance. The few Tsar Keshi who remained conscious quickly surrendered, their will to fight broken along with their ancient defenses. In the following days, as human scientists and engineers pored over the alien technology, the true magnitude of their discovery became apparent. The siege breaker hadn't just won them a battle, it had given them the keys to understanding energy manipulation on a scale they had never dreamed possible. Captain Hawthorne stood in the heart of the conquered citadel, flanked by Major Stanton and Dr. Reeves. The three men, each instrumental in their own way to this historic victory, gazed out over the sprawling alien city that now lay quiet under Earth's control. Gentlemen, Hawthorne said solemnly, today marks a new chapter in human history. We've proven that there are no unconquerable foes, no impenetrable defenses. The galaxy has opened up to us. Stanton nodded, his expression a mixture of pride and concern. But at what cost, Captain? We've essentially decimated an entire civilization. Doctor. Reeves interjected, his eyes alight with the possibilities before them. Perhaps. But we've also unlocked secrets that could propel humanity forward by centuries. Imagine the advancements we could make in energy production, in medicine, in space travel. Hawthorne held up a hand, silencing them both. You're both right. This victory comes with great power and great responsibility. It will be up to us to all of humanity to decide how we move forward from here. As the sun set on the conquered world of Tsar Kesh, casting long shadows across the alien landscape, the three men stood in contemplative silence. They had changed the course of history, shattered the barriers that had held humanity back for so long. But as with all great leaps forward, the future remained uncertain. Would humanity use this newfound power to colonize and conquer, as they had done here? Or would they learn from the fallen Tsar Keshi, using their technological marvels to forge a more peaceful path among the stars? Only time would tell. But one thing was certain the age of human ascendancy had begun, and the galaxy would never be the same again. As night fell on Tsar Kesh, the first ships from Earth entered orbit, carrying diplomats, scientists, and settlers eager to explore this new world. The unconquerable had been conquered, and humanity's march to the stars had taken its first, decisive step. Captain Hawthorne watched the ships descend, 
a mixture of pride and trepidation in his heart. They had won the battle, but the true test, the test of humanity's character in the face of near limitless power, was just beginning. And so it begins, he murmured to himself, as the first lights of human settlement began to flicker to life in the alien city below.